Hello everybody, today I would like to talk about Rhino 6 rendering and display capabilities and how this aspect can be enhanced and improved using a dedicated graphics card. Okay, let's start. Let's switch to the rendered display mode. Okay, this is the rendered display mode, which is similar to that on the previous versions of Rhino. Now, let's switch to the ray trace mode. Okay, this is the ray trace mode. As you can see, the realism of the display has been greatly improved. Okay, this is because the ray trace mode uses a new rendering engine called Rhino Cycles. So what is Rhino Cycles? Okay, basically the Rhino Cycles is based on Cycles rendering engine that was uh, initially developed for the free and open source 3D and rendering package, the Blender 3D. Okay, so um, just like the Cycles on Blender, Rhino Cycle is also a GPU enabled rendering engine. That means to say, if you have the supported graphics card, you can actually harness the power of the graphics card to enhance and improve the rendering performance of uh, the ray trace display mode. Okay, so how do you go about setting this aspect? Actually, it's quite easy. To do that, you go to File, Properties, Cycles. Okay. Under this uh, setting, there is uh, these uh, device settings. Okay. Of which uh, there are three options: uh, CPU, CUDA, and OpenCL. Okay. If um your laptop or desktop have the necessary graphics card that will support cycles it will be uh, displayed okay in this case here um this gaming laptop that i have has a gtx 1060 and rhino has uh, enabled this uh, graphics card to be used to do the rendering for the ray trace mode Okay, so what are the considerations when acquiring a suitable graphics card? Okay, I would like to make a disclaimer here that um, what I'm going to say next is based on my own personal experience and it shouldn't be taken as uh, being definitive. Okay, basically for me, my preferred cards are nvidia cards because i think they are better supported okay so let's look at some of the factors to consider when acquiring or making a decision to get a suitable card okay basically there are several factors to look into firstly is the number of cuda calls okay the CUDA cores are basically processors used to compute the renderings. So, the more core you have, the faster the render will be generally. In other words, when considering to get a suitable graphic card, you might want to get one with uh, as much a uh, CUDA core as possible based on your budget and requirement. Okay, so um, now let's do a comparison um, between the RTX and the older GTX graphics card. Basically, the RTX uh, replaces the GTX. Okay, so over here um, you can see that the 
RTX 2060 has more CUDA cores than its older version, the GTX 1060. So, in other words, render faster than GTX for um, the equivalent versions. Okay. So, the next thing you might want to look into is the frame buffer on the graphics card. Okay, basically, this is the the amount of uh, RAM on the graphics card. Okay, why is this an important factor? Okay, basically the frame buffer controls uh, the amount of scene complexity that can be loaded onto the graphics card and be rendered. So in other words, the bigger the frame buffer, the the larger or a uh, more complex uh, 3D scene could be rendered. So, um, based on my own personal experience, I'll say that uh, 6 GB will be a uh, minimum required to do any kind of serious work. Anything below 6 GB will not be advisable. That's based on my own experience. Okay. So, okay, what are the considerations to look for when getting a graphics card for a desktop? Okay, there are a few things you might want to look into is uh, firstly whether your desktop has the necessary features to, to support it. Okay, first thing you might want to check whether your desktop has the correct type of connectors to connect onto your graphics card. Okay, basically, uh, I have a GTX uh, 1060 here and, and you can see that it actually requires a connecting power. Okay. Another factor you might want to look into is uh, whether your power supplies have the necessary watt specifications to support your graphic card. So uh, for that you might want to look into the graphic card that you are acquiring and decide whether your existing power supply is able to support it or not. Okay, yeah, so these are the considerations. So, um, I think I've come to the end of this video and I uh, hope that it has been useful to you. Okay, I've placed uh, some links of uh, supported graphics card below so you can use that to start your, your search for the graphics card. Okay, um, that's all for the video. See you around. Bye.